Hi guys, welcome to Flying Grip Academy. Today we are going to discuss what is Java and what is class and object. So now basically a class is a group of objects which have common properties. It is a template or blueprint from which objects are created. It is a logical entity. It cannot be physical. You can able to consider class as a person and he will be having a certain attributes like person can be identified by the unique ID. There may be number of persons who is having his name as John and there are many persons who is having name as Desi. How can a person can be identified? Based upon unique ID so that example other ID it can be identified and person every person will be having a name and he can be identified by age gender and city and he will be having some hobbies so those we can able to categorize as methods eat study sleep and play and so on you can able to include if there are any methods you would like to include in this manner you can able to identify the class so let me illustrate with an example you can able to consider a class as a house now if you want to have a house attributes, you can able to categorize the house attributes as hall, kitchen, drawing hall, swimming pool, bedroom and so on. So based upon your necessity. So now if you want to access this class, so now you need to identify based upon object. Object is an identifiable entity with some characteristics state behavior understanding the concept of objects is much easier when we consider real life examples so around us because object is simply a real world entity object is an instance of a class we have considered house as a class and now you can able to associate the house whatever the contents inside the house as an object so now here everything you can able to consider as an object for example if you are going to consider tv as an object it will be having certain attributes like length dimensions pixels and so on so in a similar manner you can able to use the object which are in a real life which are around us for example object is an instance of class it acts as a key which you can able to access all the different rooms inside the house. So next JVM. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. So inside JVM how it is going to interact with the different objects. So now you are going to save the file with the extension called filename.java and you are going to compile the Java program Java C space file name dot java byte code or a class will be created this class can be executed anywhere so now jvm identifies which particular operating system you are using for example if you are using windows operating system it interacts with the windows library and it converts to the byte code in a similar manner jvm identifies if you are using a Linux operating system, Ubuntu or Fedora or some other operating system which belongs to Linux and it is going to convert the bytecode. And next, similarly, it identifies it is a Mac operating system, Magnitude, then it identifies its bytecode and it is going to compile the program. Once the dark class file is created, it can be executed anywhere. So this is the main thing which you can be able to use the Java class run once and execute it anywhere. So that you can run the program once in any particular operating system, any particular machine architecture, you can able to execute it anywhere. Next, how this particular internally the class loader subsystem is going to work. So now class loader subsystem will be inside JVM. So how it is going to interact? 
inside JVM. So now here you are having a class loader. It is having a pool of data where you can able to load the class. For example, one class is associated with or interlinked with number of classes. For example, all the classes are executed from the main function. So in a similar manner, class loader subsystem is going to identify how many number of methods and data members are associated with it. Next one, we are having a heap. Heap is a runtime data which objects are allocated. During the runtime, you can able to allocate the objects. Example is runtime objects or runtime arguments which are passed by the compiler. Next, stack. It stores the frames, local variables and partial results. It is used for method invocation. Stack identifies how many classes are interlinked with the objects of the main function. Based upon that, it is going to invoke other class objects. Next one is PC register. PC stands for program counter register. It is going to address the JVM. So where the particular registers are going to execute the next instruction. So basically program counter is going to execute the next instruction. Similar manner, what is the next method? What is the next variable to be executed? It tells to the class loader. Next, name interface. Name interface used to communicate with application to application. For example, operating system in Linux is written by using a C and shell programming. By using that, it is going to communicate with other languages so like C or C++ and other operating system libraries. The execution engine, the execution engine communicates with the virtual processor and it communicates with the virtual processor and interpreter just in time compiler. The execution engine is responsible to execute based upon whatever the data members and methods are passed by the new method interface it communicates with the operating system and it is going to interact with the new libraries which are relevant to that particular libraries. So this is all about class loader subsystem, how to create a first program in Java. So now here I am going to create a folder called Java programs in your C drive. Here I am going to type Java programs. So th this is the work directory where you are going to create the Java programs. So now this particular folder is empty. So now what I am going to do is I am going to type the first program in your editor which is notepad by default. Here press windows R so that you can able to type notepad. So now you are having a notepad. Now you are going to type the first program. So now here you are going to type the program class followed by class name. The next here you are going to declare public static void main. So here within this you are going to declare so within the main function, you are going to declare string array arguments. So now here I am going to open one more flower brace. So now here you are going to declare the simple output function system dot out dot println. Just a simple program hello world. So now here I am going to close braces and close the class. So now, so let us see how to execute the program. So here you have class name. Every Java program starts with the class name. So now here without class, you cannot able to declare anything. So next here you are going to define the public. Public stands for everywhere you can able to access. It means this particular class want to communicate with other class. 
so here it need to be public so that otherwise it cannot able to access data members and methods without public so next one is static so static means it is going to allocate single memory location instead of creating different memory locations so it access data members and methods from the other class non static members so next void void stands for no return type basically you will be declaring a int main in int main it has to return zero next one is main every main is a starting point of every program where it is going to start so here you have declared string array and arguments it is going to accept the command line arguments so that it is going to accept in the form of array so here we have declared an array it is going to accept command line arguments so next here you are going to type system dot out dot println it is going to display something on the screen so now let us save the program file save as you need to save the program under the directory which you have created in c drive i have created a directory called java programs go to the java programs and here you need to type class name so name of the class so otherwise if you are not going to type without class name if you want to type by your name so let us see i am going to type the class name as fg so fg dot java so now here i am going to save all files i have saved the program now setup has in order to compile the program here we have saved the directory of a program in folder called java programs so from command prompt what i need to do is i need to go to the c drive so now i am going to type cd backslash and i am going to type cd space java programs So now you need to execute the program. So here you need to execute the program. Java C space. The file name which we have saved is fg. dot Java. So now I have compiled the program. Once you have compiled the program, here you have got a file called class name. dot class. So again you need to execute the program by typing. java c space so you need to copy this program and paste the program so class name is java space followed by class name so now it is going to show a message hello world so here the one of the disadvantage is here you have saved the program with a different file name and while compiling it is going to generate a file with the class name only so class name is class name we have typed and we have saved the program as fg.java so but while compiling the program it has compiled the program and now here you can able to notice dot class file has created and the dot class file is created in order to execute the dot class file you have to execute the program by java space class name only here we are having a string array and arguments so here instead of array i am going to type three dots so let us see whether the program is going to works or not save the program recompile the program and execute the program so even though it is going to work so whenever you are going to type three dots it is going to accept it is going to accept it as an array so let us see instead of args i am going to type name now i am going to execute this program i have saved the program and now i am going to compile the program and i am going to execute the program this also works in this manner you can able to save the class and you can able to execute this program in three different manners 
here if you want to declare an array and if you are instead of this side you can able to declare the array as a right side of this particular name so even though this also works java c fg dot java so now java class name even though this also works this is the way how to create and execute a java program if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel thanks for watching